Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And love is back. And this is our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love Love. Episodes 1 through 7. Spoiler warning. Go watch episodes 1 through 7 and then come back. Because they are just... I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> just go. And yeah. come back. Come, please. Come, please come, come back. Come, yeah, come back. We'll be here waiting for you. Uh, not really. You you will just pause the video and go and watch it and then come back. We got other things to do. Like this recording. Um, you, you, you will come back, won't you? <laughs> Don't make me draw more art, Ember. <laughs> Ah, oh, but yeah, this makes a great return. I love the intro song. The intro song is so fun. So are the images. God, Eo looks so, oh my god, do I really have to do this? Because <laughs> there's a scene where they're going, I think, love, love, and they're basically pointing down at their crotches. <laughs> and he's like, oh, why am I even here? And then after the beginning of the song, which has words, basically the rest of the song is just saying the word love over and over and over again. <laughs> like a recent review we watched, I didn't realize how much it wears out the word love. Unlike the rest of the universe, Lux thinks that using a word repeatedly makes it stronger. Or doesn't dilute its strength, because it doesn't for me. Because I, I usually mean every time I use words. I usually mean it when I say I'm sorry, even if I say it 400 times. And I'm usually going, Lux, shut up, I get it. <laughs> and then she looks at the whimpering Lux for a couple hours. <laughs> I draw pretty pictures. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I should have watched the first couple of episodes over again, but it was just brilliant, especially since they started out like, wow, I can't believe we wasted our entire summer. You know, summer was supposed to be for fun, and all we did was this. But we also did these things, yeah, but they also involved this TV show from outer space. I'm just so glad it, that it's finally over. Cue the return of Wombat. <laughs> uh, and also, I think they've matured Yumoto a little bit. And he was so naive in the previous season. This one, he's innocent, but he's not naive. And I love how everyone's like, Oh, don't lose your innocence. Especially when he goes, what's a love hotel? <laughs> that, that was one of the awesome moments when the Bapu Brothers mansion first went up. Mm -hmm. You know, it does remind me of a love hotel. Yeah, I know, right? It, it, it's like one of those things. They also come in on how Western it looked because they were from, I can't remember which European country they're from, but they're from a very Western style country. It may have been France, but there was also those other twin brothers with the manly chest hair. <laughs> they were Italian, thank you. Just because I'm part Italian doesn't mean I really know much about their culture since I was entirely raised in America. <laughs> yes, and who says that that's Italian culture? I'm just saying that the brothers in episode 5 were from Italy. Oh, those brothers. Yes. I thought those were the brothers you meant. I meant uh, the evil twins. Ah, not the other twins. But I was referring to them because I couldn't remember where the other one's from, and I thought the, those twins were from France, but they're from Italy. Okay. My manly chest hair is apparently a thing. <laughs> According to Japanese perception, remember all things are put through filters. That's what I was going to say, especially since I just finished watching a great series called Don't You Know Me? I'm... Saitama. Not Saitama. Uh, Don't worry, people. We'll get it. I know it starts with an S. Yeah, it does. And that's why I went One Punch Man instead of this one, because I haven't... You haven't seen it? You really should. Uh, yes, but back on topic. Cute, cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Can we talk about something I have seen? <laughs> <laughs> How Japanese view Americans in other countries is, at least in anime, is hilarious. Because they usually exaggerate things. Like, apparently, chest hair and how manly that is. And I love how the, the cute high members are like, Really? Chest hair is a thing? I don't have any. None of us have any. Yes, because you're anime pretty boys. <laughs> you're only allowed to have hair on your head. <laughs> or if you happen to be a pretty boy who's also part animal, on your ears and tail. <laughs> yes. Uh, just 
there's so many great moments in this series. They they brought it back in full force. Oh my god. Yes. And, you know, they went with the whole, okay, yes, season two outfits have to be even more over the top. Mm -hmm. If I ever do cosplay Cerulean, I'm doing the season one version. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try, if I ever get the right wig that looks good and get a little bit skinnier, I might go for Vesta because Vesta and Yamoto are my two favorite characters in the entire cast. Just thinking about those two really strikes a chord with me. Yeah, my thing is that I'm only cosplaying characters who actually have pants. <laughs> which means that I could not do Vesta. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, one of the last episodes we watched. There was that great thing where there was a fight going on between Vesta and Sulphur. It was it was great. <laughs> Uh, especially since they were the solution to the fight at the end because they were actually fighting with from what we can interpret actual true love because this isn't this or this <laughs> and i love everyone aren't you two still a fight oh, what you two made up no this is completely different this has nothing to do with anything else even though the two of us are imperfectly in sync and saying all the same things mm -hmm. and it was just so glorious them going through the finishing animations like love is over <laughs> uh, just Oh. Yes, because whenever two other characters fight, they have to perform the finishing move. Because Epinard and Cerulean had to do that last season with the Hikamori monster. Mm -hmm. Also, I could have done it without a particular scene in that particular episode. Yeah, the last uh, air quotes on this cute thing that, that the panda did was completely uh, unneeded in my opinion. Yeah, I was like... Why is that even know oh my I know they're trying to accent the fact that everything this panda does is cute because of his powers, but I could have done without the potty humor. <laughs> oh, but let's go back a couple episodes. I really like the episode with the statues and the hat thing and how Yamoto went through that whole thing actually and how you want to do it as a play and how his brother's like, Oh, this is so nice. Yeah, it's like, this acting is terrible, and Yamoto's force of personality, because not only did he manage to talk all the other battle lovers into going to the elementary school to do a presentation for the kids, he managed to change it into a play, and got Io <laughs> to spend money. <laughs> That's a real point you have to put on that. Oh, and the fact that the kids were so enjoying it, especially like, when did this turn into a Sentai show? <laughs> it's like, it was all along, kid. You just didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a theory this year that it's not a reality show, but it's an actual Sentai show they're in this time. Uh, based on the way the brothers are acting and how they want idol status, I'm thinking it's more like Britain's Got Talent. Or American Idol or something along those lines. Yeah, that's another theory I have too. But I'm like, recently I'm like, hmm, I wonder if the twist is they're actually in a Sentai show this time. <laughs> it could be because just because the evil twins are pursuing a particular agenda doesn't mean that they fully know what's going on. Ah, and the reason they want to be an idol is because they idolized Yamoto's brother. Gora, yes. Which, it's so awesome because we see, you know, from the beginning that they don't really like Yamoto. Mm -hmm. But we don't find out why until later when we see flashbacks of them actually seeing Gora's television show. Which mm -hmm. I didn't realize was broadcast on Earth. Apparently it may not have been broadcast on Japan. Assuming that the twins are human. Yeah, I was just about to say, they could be from outer space. Or it was broadcast in other countries because they're not from Japan. So it could be put off as, you know, an actual work of fiction. Or it could be broadcast later when it failed as an actual TV show in space. So they tried to make some more profit off it by actually broadcasting it just on Earth to outside of Japan. Entirely possible. But that's the thing. Gora is their superhero idol from their childhood. Mm -hmm. And apparently they find out that he's real. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the wonderful Christmas episode, which was gold from beginning to end. <laughs> Yeah, normally with Cute High Earth Defense Club Love and similar short series, we try to stop and do our recording at the halfway point, but we had to go just 
one further, and we're so glad we did. <laughs> oh my god, this episode is just beautiful. Uh, though I didn't actually expect him to turn into a reindeer, I expected a different kind of monster, but yeah. But what's gold about the episode is the twins realizing that, shoot, we effed up. Right after, like, we got invited to a party by him? <gasps> oh, shoot. <laughs> we set loose a monster that's going to destroy Christmas forever, but we just had something happy happen for Christmas. Quick, go find the monster. Make it stop. Can we do that? Can we, can we do that? Can we make the monster stop? I'll try. <laughs> and totally fail. And then, okay, we got to give them a chance to escape so that they can transform and beat the monster. I can't believe we have to let them win. Yes, but we have to do the present exchange because we couldn't do the present exchange before the monster showed up because we got voted down because everybody's so mean and doesn't care about what we want because we're spoiled brats. <laughs> I actually ended up caring for those two by the end of this episode. I thought they were okay and good villains, but at this point I was like, I like them as people. <laughs> Well, pretty much as soon as I figured out their motivation for hating Yamoto, I liked them more because they actually had some depth and they had reasons for what they were doing. Though I did find the part at the end where they were both like, this glove's great. And we get to share it and they were touching each other's faces. I found that a little bit creepy. Um, do recall that this is Cute High Earth Defense Club love. There is shipping material everywhere. Yes, it's permeated by shipping material. It's made out of shipping material. <laughs> yeah, I, I think FedEx ran out of packaging because it's all in this <laughs> series. Yeah, and none of the navies have ships anymore because they're all <laughs> in this series. Uh, also, it was kind of funny that in the preview for the next episode of the Christmas episode, we're like, is there a girl in this episode? And we both realized, oh, that's just Vesta. <laughs> yes. But I have a feeling, even though the twins are so happy that they got the present from Gora, which was the gloves, they're probably going to turn around and be very upset that Yamoto got their gift. Because if you look at the size of that wonderful handmade sweater with the heart emblem on it, it was meant for Gora. Yep. Oh. Uh, going back to other episodes where we went, okay, receive my balls. <laughs> You must be more aggressive with my balls. balls. Why did you have to say that in the bath? <laughs> uh, also, another quick note back on the Christmas episode of how they actually defeated the monster. They were kind to it. They actually gave him love. <laughs> Actual love saved the day. Yes, and it was all by Gora, who is the kindest and most humble character of the entire series. Probably out of seven or six other animes he is probably also the most kindest and gentle and humble mm -hmm. but back to my balls i went back to his no <laughs> back to the episode about volleyballs ba there we go <laughs> yes disturbing on so many levels i think i paused that one as much as lux paused episode 23 of mlp it took me several sessions to actually watch that episode all the way through. Not because I was pausing it, but I was like, I have better things to do than watch an episode by someone about someone's balls. <laughs> uh, but it was still a hilarious episode because of the fact, like, okay. It's like, okay, they're really saying this because I can tell by the translation notes because even the characters are going, really? <laughs> or do you eat what? And I love how it's because he's so innocent that he rides with everything. Yamoto is just like, okay, volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a nice touch in that episode that at the beginning of Yamoto's transformation sequence, because transformation sequences are footage recycling gold, mm -hmm. they took the time to have it start with him in the volleyball outfit. Yes, that was wonderful. I like those little touches like that. And then going back to another episode I mentioned with the... <laughs> Another one of those strange things, like, really? Chest hair? Chest hair? It's the chest hair that makes you jealous of your brother. This is why you won't take baths with him anymore. Okay, you're adult men, and you still take... I'm fine with this. Do your thing, but... Really, chest hair. <laughs> also, going back to my... Going back to the balls. Going back to the volleyball episode. 
So it wasn't. It was the fact that he didn't wouldn't take the time to polish you. That was your thing. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so what's more of your favorite episodes? Well, um, so far my favorite episodes would be one through seven. <laughs> Any particular point through those episodes? <laughs> well, obviously episode one because that gave us our setup. Mm -hmm. And the whole, it's over the top. It was a nice touch that we didn't go back to the more better versions of the costumes. We actually started with new season two costumes. Mm -hmm. And we got the previous season's villains out of the way immediately. Though I do like the fact that the whole thing is still wrapped up. They're still friends. They're still learning to be friends. And that reminds me more about the first episode where they both passed out. In the, in the bath. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. They're like, oh. Shoot! We let them! <laughs> I also like the fact that, so where's the teacher? And Wobbit's like, they did it again. <laughs> and they cut to the teacher lying dead underneath a light post. Because apparently the wombat fell out of the sky right on top of him. <laughs> yeah. Very unlucky teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, then in the Christmas episode, he was a coat rack. <laughs> <sighs> oh... That was in the episode where Io and Ryu were fighting because Yamada walked in and put his bag on him in the club room. I could have them mixed up. So, yeah, it could be that episode. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, and also the fun of Yamoto innocently talking about hermaphrodite slugs mating in episode six and how it works and how it's a circle and how... uh. Epinard and Cerulean just want to hear more about this because everything is so awkward with Io and Ryu that anything to fill the silence is better. <laughs> including hearing about slug mating habits. <laughs> uh, I also love how we found out in that episode how they first met and ran into each other and how they first ended up in the bathhouse and how the bathhouse got them together and how it was Yamoto who actually got them wet who actually splashed them with water. There's going to be a lot of this. Apparently there's already a lot of this. I'm not going to end at any of this out, because it's funny. <laughs> I like that whole setup. I'm like, I like how that works. It's a little bit of retconning, but it's the good kind of retconning. <laughs> yes, especially that whole thing about the lining of their school uniforms. I'm like, wouldn't either of them have gotten replacement jackets by this point? Mm -hmm. Especially EO, you know. Money. Yep. Or he wouldn't have replaced it because money. But I love what they were fighting about. No, you're a better person. No, you're a better person. No, you are more awesome. No, you are more awesome. <laughs> Dang it, I wanted to do that. <laughs> yes, how the entire thing started out because each of them heard other students making fun of the opposite. So I defend you. You say you're not awesome. Look, no, you are totally awesome. No, you are more awesome. Don't you realize what you do? You are so awesome. No, I am not awesome. You are a million times more awesome than I am. Everyone else is like, this is what you're fighting about. You each defended each other's honor. Just, God, go get shipped already. <laughs> I think they've already been shipped by everyone but them. Pretty much. Uh, no, you're better at picking up girls. No, you're better at math. Yes, but what are my pickup skills compared to your financial abilities? If you didn't do this social thing and live your life, the economy would die. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, we love this series just as much as the first series. Actually, I think we love it a little bit more, especially because of that Christmas episode. <laughs> yes. The reindeer got a little trippy, though, when he was talking about the Christmas Eve date and you flashed the hotel keys to the girl. Yeah. Like, really? That's what you want on your Christmas Eve? I know Christmas Eve in Japan is more like Valentine's Day, but that's your idealized Christmas Eve. Having a nice dinner with a girl and then going to a love hotel. Because that's what the keys symbolize. It's like, yeah, we're going to do this. Why is she running away? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, no wonder this guy hasn't had a date yet, because he's all about getting to have fun with other reindeer. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's all about the other kind of reindeer games. 
<laughs> and that reminds me uh, of Yamoto's brother going, Oh, you, you're working so hard delivering those presents. Yeah, it's just so awesome because, as you know, Goro went through a series of being a battle lover. Mm -hmm. So he would recognize that this is probably a monster. But what does he do? He doesn't go and try to help the battle lovers escape. You know, so that they can go transform. He actually shows kindness to the monster. And every time the monster starts to escalate the situation, Gora instantly diffuses it. I also like at the end how what really helps diffuse it is Yamoto going, Why don't you join our party since, you know, you've always wanted to join one? Come to ours! And, really? Really? You're inviting me to your party? <laughs> it's like, dude, you're already here. So, I mean... We let the annoying brothers come, so you may as well be here. Yeah. I love how everyone was like, really? They're here? Why are they here? Oh, I invited them. Oh, it's okay now. <laughs> uh, it's like, Gora, you can't just do that. These guys are like idols at our school. That's like social strata and stuff. Not that we care or anything. anything. And they're like, well, we canceled our plans. And everyone's like, probably didn't have any plans. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Sorry to talk about that episode so much. It was just such a good episode, but it's what we do. <laughs> Uh, so let's see. We've gone over theories. We've gone over plenty of the episodes. We could go back over more episodes if you remember more, because I, I don't really remember much of the first three or so episodes I watched. I only remember, like, the last three we actually watched. <laughs> because that was more recent. Mm -hmm. But the early ones were more just on the buildup and the setup. I think things really started to get going. In, in these last couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Is we're getting the villain's motivation, which mm -hmm. we thought we knew in season one, but we didn't find out the true motivation till later. And now we have what seems to be their true motivation very clearly spilled out. And there's been a reasonable amount of buildup to it because, oh, they hate Yamoto. Oh, why do they hate Yamoto? Oh, Gora's their idol. They like Gora. Gora loves Yamoto. Something about that relationship is damaging to their idealized image of what Gora is. Or it could be in the show's finale, they think the reason the show got cancelled was because of Yamoto. Mm. But another thing from the Christmas episode that just popped into my head is how they the smear on their, like they see, oh, let me get that for you. I love how Gora is like, oh, you got something on your face. Let me wipe that off for you. And they're like, <laughs> marching over to... <laughs> And Vesta's like, you got something on your face. Wipe. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, because they just look so hopeful and happy. And I'm sorry, uh, this, the shipping fuel is just ridiculous. I mean, they both put marks of white cream on their face. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I do like their names, though. Uh, at least their transform names. I can't see them fully, but I know it's Moon and Sun. Uh, salty Soul. Melty Luna. <laughs> Lucky you. Happy you. <laughs> Got the English in this. <laughs> Welcome to the Vep Theater. <laughs> I love how every time that happens, the guys are like, why the hell am I here? Also, speaking of footage reusage, the entire song, song. every time except the Christmas episode. episode. The Christmas episode is one of the few times they had almost in the entire episode was new animation. Yes, because the battle lovers never transformed and we didn't see the brothers make the reindeer monster, so we missed that animation. And when they did finally get around to singing, it was all, we got invited, yes, we got invited, we got invited, we got invited, we got invited! <laughs> oh no, what are we gonna do? I don't know, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We got invited, what are we gonna do? And then that's when they went, shoot! Um, we made a monster. <laughs> yeah, we gotta fix that. We just ruined our entire holiday, didn't we? we? Well, we didn't care about the holiday at first, but yeah, it's ruined now, isn't it? We gotta fix that. Uh, so, your final thoughts on the season so far? As if it wasn't obvious, uh, greatly enjoy, love that we're actually getting some story build up. And because this is the second season, we have more of a frame of reference to pick up on things. Because like in season one, we were suspicious of the photography club and the fish. But now we know more of what to be suspicious of and how to look for things. 
So a lot of what we're seeing could actually turn out to be red herrings because the writers know that we know what the previous season was like, and I wouldn't put that past them. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this season so far. I'm enjoying it better. I think the whole setup is better because of the fact that they know the audience already knows things. So they can pull off more knowing that the audience will get this joke because the audience already expects certain things from this show. So they can take that and even make a joke in and of itself or have the characters treat it like it's an everyday thing because they've experienced it before. And just, I like the villains better this time around. I, I like the villains the first time, but just something about these twins, I'm really enjoying more and I'm laughing at them more and I'm enjoying their characters more. I think they're a little more relatable. You know, the original three, uh, I won't be able to pronounce it. Even at my best, I couldn't pronounce the uh, Kadalas correctly. And yes, I know there's two words, not one. You know who I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they seem so focused on, you know, a pure and orderly world that it, unless you're 100% OCD, it's a little hard to relate to them. Mm -hmm. but this is just them striving to be something that they saw when they were younger. They want to be idols like their idol, except they're going about it in a rather interesting process thanks to a flying squirrel from outer space. I also love the Shooting star! <laughs> that makes me laugh every time with the flying squirrel. Yeah, I'm thinking that hurts less than the Zundar needles, though. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't wait to watch the rest of the season. Because if it's just as good as this so far, oh my god. Me and Ember won't be able to get up off the floor from all the laughing we will be doing. That or going, oh my god, the, sh the ship... <laughs> Probably a little of both. Ah, well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on... I almost said Sailor Moon Crystal. <laughs> Close. And this has been our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love Love, episodes 1 through 7. Speaking of love, we'd love if you'd click the subscribe love. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that in as a blooper. Speaking of love, we'd love it if you'd click the subscribe button. Want to share the love? Try reblogging us. Love us a lot. Lux has a Patreon. Share the love. <laughs>